Frank's famous sweeping superpowers are augmented by a stealthily tilted or slanted alternate picking motion, letting him do the kind of sophisticated string switching and string skipping we see in many of his most recognizable signature patterns. So you might reasonably ask, how does Frank manage to keep the pick attack smooth and the notes sounding good while doing all this? The answers to this simple question are very cool and run surprisingly deep, beginning with something that lots of us do and Frank especially has talked about for years, edge picking. Imagine your guitar is really a plane. Now imagine that the pick is a wing. Like any wing, it has a leading edge, which is the one that faces the direction the plane is flying, and it also has a trailing edge which points behind the plane. By rotating the pick so the leading edge points down, we can cause the leading edge to hit the string on the downstroke, and the trailing edge to hit the string on the upstroke. This is the orientation we call leading edge picking. If instead we rotate the pick the other way, so the leading edge points up, now the reverse will happen. The trailing edge will hit the string on the downstroke, and the leading edge will hit the string on the upstroke. This is the setup we call trailing edge picking. Frank is a leading edge picker. The benefit of this is what happens when you actually play a note. The string rides the sloped edge of the pick, helping the pick to glide more easily over the string. Having no edge pick at all, completely flat, can make it hard to get the pick through the string. Frank's trademark 45 degree orientation is a healthy amount, and it's part of what makes sweeping work more smoothly. Another is his pick choice. Frank's been using these base sized picks for years, and they're essentially the shape of an equilateral triangle that got fatter. Frank likes these picks because he says they slide more smoothly. Part of it was using big picks too, you know, like this. Uh, these triangle picks, which are like, um, they're, they were considered base picks back in the day, and they have a much softer curve. If you compare that point, with a standard, you know, teardrop pick. It's much softer, so for me it worked better when I was sliding across strings. Enhancing the sliding effect of edge picking is the path the pick traces across the strings. Frank's arm approaches the strings like this, on an angle. The result is that the path of the pick's travel across the strings isn't a strictly straight up and down motion. Instead, that motion path is offset where picking on the low strings places the pick closer to the neck, and picking on the high strings places the pick closer to the bridge. The exact shape and offset of this motion path is affected by lots of variables, including motion at the elbow and finger joints, all of which Frank adjusts in real time for maximum symmetry of attack and smoothness in both directions. In 50 years of playing, Frank says he has never had a repetitive strain type injury, and he attributes this in part to keeping all these moving parts within a comfortable range of motion. So the geometry is getting tricky here, and there's still an additional axis of pick attack to think about. You might have already noticed this, but every time Frank fires up his DSX alternate picking motion, did you catch that his pick also appears slanted in its orientation? Regular Cracking the Code viewers will already recognize this familiar slanted orientation of the pick because it's something we've talked about quite a bit. Pick slanting. Slanting the pick toward the ceiling, like this, for upward pick slanting, or the reverse, toward the floor, for downward pick slanting, is a type of mechanical control that Frank is definitely aware of. That. Exactly. There's a little bit of this, yeah, you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like leaning into corners if you're on a motorcycle. And this motorcycle leaning turns out to be a critically important aspect of Frank's mechanics. Because when you look at Frank's upstroke sweeping motion and his DSX alternate picking motion, we discover they both use the same pick slant. In this case, it's the upward pick slant, or UWPS for short. This coincidence is what allows these two motions to be connected together inside the same phrase at high speed with no loss of efficiency.
This seamless partnership between sweeping, alternate picking, and pick slanting is what powers the sophisticated combinations of Frank's signature patterns. It took us a long time to figure out how exactly the pick slant works to unite these two seemingly different motions. So if you're ready, here's the technical explanation. There are a variety of ways you can orient the pick on a guitar, and pick slanting is often confused with some of those other ways. Imagine the strings from the bridge to the headstock are the x-axis. Now imagine the y-axis runs from the floor to the ceiling. And finally, imagine the z-axis comes straight out of the body of the guitar. Edge picking is the z-axis. Turning the pick around this axis introduces more of the sloped edge to the string contact. Edge picking is a super common playing technique. Frank uses it, but this is not pick slanting and not what he's talking about here. Instead, pick slanting is the x-axis. If the body of the pick is stuck to the strings like a hinge, then slanting it down produces the downward pick slant, and slanting it up produces the upward pick slant. And slanting in both directions, like Frank does, where he sometimes uses the downward slant, and sometimes uses the upward slant, is what we call two-way pick slanting. Now the trick with pick slanting is that it actually serves two purposes, one somewhat obvious, and another not very obvious at all. The more obvious purpose has to do with sweeping, by helping the pick slide over the strings. For example, if you want to sweep this way, just slant the pick a little in the direction of the motion, and we get the sliding effect. The more you slant in the direction of the sweeping motion, the more sliding you get. But if you try to sweep against the slant, the point of the pick catches underneath the strings, and we get stuck. To avoid this, we just reverse the pick slant. So we can slant in the other direction, and now we can do our upstroke sweep just as smoothly. When you use pick slanting this way, what you're really doing is modifying the pick's angle of attack below 90 degrees in the direction of your sweep. It's this sub 90 degree attack that gives us the sliding. Most of us already do this subconsciously when strumming, but Frank's doing it here for single note lead playing. And he does this effortlessly and instinctively as the phrase requires. Now let's tackle the much less obvious case, which is pick slanting for alternate picking. Let's say we have our DSX motion, and let's say we're not using a pick slant. Our downstroke feels smooth, but our upstroke digs under the strings and feels sticky. And if you think about it, you'll realize this is an angle of attack problem. Compared to the way it's moving, the downstroke has a reduced angle of attack, below 90 degrees. And this is why it feels smooth. This is the same effect we saw with sweeping, where the reduced angle of attack produces sliding. But the upstroke is the reverse. It actually has an increased angle of attack, above 90 degrees. This causes it to dig under the strings and feel sticky. And once again, this is similar to what we saw with sweeping when we tried to sweep against the pick slant. We can try to fix this by getting rid of our escape motion. So instead of moving along a diagonal, now we're just moving side to side. And sure enough, this works. The downstrokes and the upstrokes now feel smooth because the pick has a 90 degree angle of attack in both directions. But look what we did to our picking motion. This picking motion is trapped on the downstroke and trapped on the upstroke. Remember, this is alternate picking. We can't just sweep through the string. We have to get over it, but we can't do that because we're not escaping anymore. We've lost our high-speed string switching superpower, so we can't play Frank's fast groups of alternate twos and fours. And now we have a pretty tricky problem. We can have a DSX motion with an uneven pick attack, or we can have a trapped motion with a smooth pick attack. And neither one really gives us everything we want. How can we solve this? We can use an upward pick slant. How much upward pick slanting? Exactly the amount that matches our picking motion. This restores our 90 degree angle of attack and makes upstrokes and downstrokes equally smooth. 
So even though Frank's DSX motion appears weirdly tilted at first, by tilting the camera to level out the picking motion, we can see what's really going on here. Relative to its motion path, the pick isn't tilted at all. It's straight up and down, and it's moving side to side. This gives us our smooth pick attack and our string switching superpower at the same time. So the purpose of pick slanting for alternate picking, amazingly, is to cancel out the effect of the diagonal picking motion. Even though the motion is slanted, the pick itself is also slanted just enough to get rid of the stickiness problem. And this is why we see pick slanting both during sweeping and during alternate picking. When you look at pure alternate players like David Greer, who do downstroke escape motion, you will often see an upward pick slant when they do it. How amazing is this? Two best of the best players operating in completely separate musical styles, each figuring out a fundamental alternate picking technique by intuition alone. That's what the best players do. Across the many interviews we've done at Cracking the Code, what we've come to realize about amazing players isn't just that they can play things that the rest of us struggle with, but that they've figured out efficient ways of doing so with nobody else showing them. So what we're getting at is that there's a connection between alternate picking and sweeping, and that connection is pick slanting. It's the glue between these two worlds, and it serves two different purposes, one for sweeping and one for alternate. During sweeping, the pick slant reduces the pick attack to make sweeping smoother. And during alternate picking, the pick slant equalizes the pick attack, so that it's about 90 degrees during both upstrokes and downstrokes. And this right here, the fact that you can use the same pick slant to connect a sweeping motion with a diagonal alternate picking escape motion is one of the great cosmic coincidences of guitar picking mechanics. And it is the core of what makes Frank's space age technique work. In the next installment, we'll add another pick slant, another sweeping motion, and another core alternate picking motion to the mix, giving us everything we'll need to assemble the complete tool set of Dampali sweeping. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.